Incredible progress is underway. Ship 36 has wrapped up testing, and Booster 16 now sports its hot staging ring. Key steps toward Flight 10. Will Flight 10 launch this month and set a record for the fastest Starship turnaround? Meanwhile, ULA's Atlas V faces an indefinite delay. Let's dive into the details in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Both stages of Flight 10 had already completed their cryogenic testing well before Flight 9. With that major step out of the way, the only significant pre-launch milestone left is the static fire testing. B-16 took the lead earlier this month by surprising everyone with an early rollout for static fire just a week after Flight 9. The test was carried out and completed successfully. Now it is S-36's turn to go through its own static fire campaign. On the morning of June 15th, S-36 was transported to the Massey test site and mounted onto the stand, signaling that test operations were imminent. In the early hours of the 16th, its aft flaps were deployed, clearly showing that preparations were moving forward. By early afternoon that same day, testing officially began. The cryogenic load was modest this time, with only about one-third of the liquid oxygen tank filled and a small amount of liquid methane, but there was still a healthy amount of venting observed during the process. Once everything was in position, an engine was ignited. Given the limited amount of propellant used, it is likely that this was a single engine test. The engine fired for approximately 6 to 7 seconds, generating around 230 tons of thrust. This brief but important test is expected to support the relight engine capability in space, a maneuver attempted during Flight 6, but absent from the past three flights. Another notable element of the test involved the movement of S-36's flaps. Both the forward and aft flaps were actuated during the test, which helps validate the ship's aerodynamic systems. These control surfaces are essential for re-entry stability, payload deployment maneuvers, ultimately for precision landings. Testing them at this stage adds confidence to the spacecraft's readiness for flight. This marks only the beginning of the S-36 static fire campaign. A more extensive test involving all six engines is expected to follow soon possibly within a day. This full duration firing will likely last about a minute and will help validate engine performance under stress, including thrust adjustment and system flexibility. These engines are critical to multiple flight phases, including stage separation, orbital insertion, payload delivery, and atmospheric re-entry. If no issues arise, S-36's full static fire could wrap up shortly. The vehicle is expected to return to Mega Bay 2 later this week, where it'll undergo final checks, receive its payload, and be fitted with the flight termination system. These tasks are anticipated to take place next week, after which S-36 should be ready to roll out to the launch pad, potentially by the weekend. If all goes smoothly, this timeline keeps the door open for a Flight 10 launch before the end of the month. Meanwhile, B-16 is also making steady progress. After returning to the production site on the evening of the 7th, it underwent a series of inspections. There were initial concerns about a possible collision with the moving platform during its detachment from the orbital launch mount. But it appears that no serious damage occurred. By midday on the 11th, B-16's hot staging ring was spotted, confirming that the hardware check phase had been completed. The booster was then moved into Mega Bay, signaling the start of installation work on its hot staging assembly and flight termination system. At this pace, B-16 is expected to complete all preparations ahead of S-36 and could be ready to roll out as early as next week. Overall, the rapid progress on both hardware components raises strong hopes for a June launch. If this pace holds, Flight 10 could lift off in the final days of the month, aligning closely with Musk's estimated turnaround window of three to four weeks. So what does all this progress actually mean? If Flight 10 launches this month, even on the very last day, the 30th, SpaceX will officially break its turnaround record between Starship flights. The current record stands at 37 days between Flight 5 and 6. A June 30th launch would reduce that interval to just 34 days, setting a new benchmark for the fastest launch cadence in the Starship program's history. This would be a powerful demonstration of how SpaceX is continuing to refine and accelerate its Starship operations. As launch procedures become more streamlined and hardware production scales up, SpaceX is clearly laying down a strong and consistent roadmap for future launches. 
Looking at the rest of 2025, the impact of this momentum could be even more significant. Last year, in 2024, SpaceX launched four Starship missions. This year, Flight 10 will, 10 will already match that number, and there are still several months left on the calendar. If SpaceX maintains its current pace, we could see a fifth or even sixth Starship flight before the year ends, marking a noticeable improvement in Starship flight frequency compared to the previous year. Even more ambitious are the company's long-term goals. SpaceX is targeting a rapid expansion of launch capacity at both of its launch facilities. At Starbase, the vision is to eventually achieve up to 25 Starship flights per year. Meanwhile, over in Florida, significant progress is being made with plans for 44 launches at Launch Complex 39A, as well as an impressive 76 flights at Launch Complex 37, the site SpaceX is taking over from United Launch Alliance. Reaching those targets would require a sustainable launch cadence of at least three to six Starship missions per month. To do that, the company needs to first establish a reliable pattern of two successful consecutive launches. That foundation must be laid now, and Flight 10 could be a crucial step in making it a reality. That said, rapid progress must still be matched with technical readiness. SpaceX has a number of challenges to address before Flight 10 can proceed. These include a propellant leak in Ship 29 that led to the loss of control during Flight 9, issues with the payload deployment system, a fire near the aft flaps, and problems with Super Heavy, such as igniter failures, engine anomalies, and difficulties during re-entry caused by a higher-than-expected angle of attack. Every one of these problems must be resolved to ensure a successful and safe Flight 10. There are also regulatory considerations. SpaceX must complete a mishap investigation as required by the FAA and respond to concerns over debris that reached parts of Mexico during Flight 9. However, there is reason for optimism. The FAA has already confirmed that there was no damage to people or property and has limited its investigation to the ship stage while waiving additional inquiries into the booster. This greatly improves the chances of clearing the path for a launch this month. So, what do you think? With steady progress on all fronts, will Flight 10 launch before June comes to an end? Let us know with a yes or a no in the comments down below, along with your best guess on the launch date. I know previously I said July 3rd, but now I'm feeling June 29th. If you enjoyed this update, please like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay on top of all the latest developments in SpaceX's journey to the stars. Now we move on to a significant development from ULA regarding its Atlas V rocket. Specifically, a planned launch of an Atlas V carrying Amazon's second batch of Project Kuiper satellites, known as Kuiper 2, was scheduled for the afternoon of June 16th. However, that mission was abruptly postponed due to a technical issue discovered during the countdown. ULA made the announcement on X stating, The launch of a United Launch Alliance Atlas V 551, carrying Amazon's second Project Kuiper mission, Kuiper 2, is delayed due to an engineering observation of an elevated purge temperature within the booster engine. Adding further context, ULA CEO Tori Bruno posted an update on the Blue Sky platform, possible issue with a GN2 purge line that cannot be resolved inside the count. We will need to stand down for today, we'll sort it out and be back. In more technical terms, this points to a perch line issue likely related to the nitrogen gas system used to keep the engine's components clean and at proper temperatures during non-operational phases. An elevated perch temperature typically suggests a breakdown in the cooling system or insulation, which may cause the engine to overheat even before ignition. While this sort of issue may sound routine, it can have serious implications for mission safety and engine integrity. What makes the situation more concerning is that the Atlas V rocket relies on the RD-180 engine, a product of Russian engineering that has been in use for over two decades that has been in use for over two decades. While the RD-180 has had a long and largely successful track record, it is also aging, and the geopolitical environment has made acquiring and supporting these engines increasingly difficult. As a result, this issue may not be a one-off incident, but a symptom of broader aging infrastructure concerns. ULA followed up with another update. The team will evaluate the hardware, and we will release a new launch date when available. This shows the seriousness of the issue, with no immediate timeline for when the mission might resume. That uncertainty poses short-term and long-term consequences. In the short term, Amazon's Project Kuiper will have to push back its deployment schedule. 
Kuiper is Amazon's answer to SpaceX's Starlink constellation, and every delay gives Starlink a larger lead in the satellite broadband market. With only one successful Kuiper launch so far, these early setbacks are especially critical. In the longer term, this situation shines a light on ULA's broader struggles and raises questions about Amazon's launch strategy. Because of Amazon's corporate ties to Jeff Bezos, the company deliberately avoided using SpaceX vehicles for deploying its constellation. Instead, it opted for launches with Blue Origin's New Glenn, ULA's Vulcan, and Europe's Ariane 6. Unfortunately, none of these rockets have proven themselves in terms of launch cadence or reliability. New Glenn, though, finally launched for the first time earlier this year, remains far from the operational readiness that Blue Origin would love it to be at. Ariane 6 has been delayed repeatedly, and Vulcan, after its long-awaited debut, has faced challenges of its own. During its second flight earlier this year, Vulcan encountered a malfunction with one of its solid rocket boosters, forcing the team to halt further launches until the issue is resolved. Due to these delays, Atlas V, a rocket nearing retirement, was brought back into more frequent service to fill the gap. However, now even Atlas V is facing difficulties, further complicating Kuiper's already shaky launch pipeline. Considering Amazon and its partners need to conduct at least 83 successful launches to deploy the entire 3,200 satellite constellation, this kind of instability is a major setback. All of this raises a larger question. Even if Kuiper reaches orbit, will it ever reach the scale and efficiency of Starlink? Honestly, that seems increasingly doubtful. Looking ahead, the future of Atlas V also appears uncertain. Following the Kuiper 2 mission, only 13 Atlas V launches remain on the manifest. These include one mission for Viasat, six more for Kuiper, and six for Boeing's Starliner program, which itself is facing delays and is not expected to launch again until early next year at the earliest. For now, ULA's priority is clear. Resolve the technical issue affecting the Atlas V and Kuiper 2. The outcome of this repair effort could shape the immediate future of both the rocket and Amazon's broadband constellation. So, let's see how they handle the challenge ahead. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.